This is Chicago's Progressive Talk, 820 AM, WCPT Willow Springs, and online at WCPT820.com, where facts matter. Tired of all those talking heads down the dial who think they're always right? People need to just calm down. It's gotten ridiculous. Welcome to WCPT 820, where facts matter. Quite frankly, I get most of my news from you. This is WCPT 820, Chicago's progressive talk. The following program, The Lightning Strike, is sponsored by Mohammed Fahim and to the extent applicable their guests. The views and opinions expressed therein do not necessarily reflect those of Newsweb Radio Company or its management. Get ready to be jolted out of the ordinary and into a world where conversations are charged with intensity and facts. The Lightning Strike Talk Radio with your host, Mohammed Fahim, broadcasting live from the heart of the city on Chicago's Progressive Talk Radio, WCPT 820 AM. Welcome to a radio show that charges through the airwaves with an electricity like no other. Here's your host, Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, Chicago, and welcome to another edition of the Lightning Strike, coming to you live from WCPT AM 820. In the heart of Chicago, Chicago's progressive talk radio station. Joining me in the studios today, Ken DeLuke. How's it, and folks? also, we got a wonderful guest in the studio, which uh, I don't think I'm going to be introducing him. Ken, you want to introduce the, our, our guest for the, for the day in the studio today? Yes, he is uh, literally my favorite mascot in the world. <laughs> um, basically, Joey Hafano. He is the uh, the mascot for the Harlem Globetrotters, and he's got some interesting stories to share with us today. So, uh, welcome, Joey. Thanks for joining us. Oh, totally. No, great to be here, guys. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, no, just uh, always good to have fun. Okay, yeah. Joey. Yeah, we're trying to keep the the show a little bit uh, light today, in uh, in light of all the. Heavy stuff that is happening all over the world. Sometimes we need to take a a break, not from uh, reality, because reality is that things are pretty bad out there, folks. And we, we will be talking about it. But uh, also joining us today at 9.15 is going to be Lori Summers. She is the Will County coroner and we'll try to find out uh, you know what does the coroner do what's the difference between a coroner and a medical examiner and all those good things and uh, the challenges uh, that that office faces also we have another guest that would be calling in and uh, Ken you want to go ahead and introduce our uh, third guest that would be calling in yes um Frank Papalardo, he is uh, one of the most successful audio engineers in the whole country. He's recorded and mixed over 120 <laughs> concerts uh, for TV, CDs, and he's mostly known for his work on the PBS show Soundstage, which he uh, was the engineer for 12 years. He's probably spoken and uh, been part of like almost every major band you can think of uh, and he's got some interesting stories to share with us later on so wonderful thank you and you are tuned in to WCPT 820 AM you can also watch us live on facebook.com forward slash WCPT 820 and uh, joining me on the phones now our person of the week and a uh, person of the week is always introduced by Sheila White. Sheila is the segment producer. And if you would like to join us as the person of the week or join us as the guest on the show at any time, feel free to reach out to us through our website, which is TLS for The Lightning Strike, TLSChicago.com. And uh, here is Sheila White introducing our person of the week for this week today. Sheila, you're on. Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited to have with us, our guest today, which is Dr. Eric Boone. He is also a pastor, and he's celebrating his sixth pastoral anniversary. And he's also helping with the homeless. He's working with prison reform. He's doing such a great work in the great state of Indiana and the city of Gary, as a matter of fact. And uh, he's very educated. He has more than one degree. But I want to start to talk about a little bit, Pastor Boone, about what experiences inspired you to go into ministry? Well, facing a lot coming from Gary, Indiana, and just thank you for letting me be on this show. Um, I have witnessed a lot since a young boy. You know that Gary, Indiana, in the 90s and 2000s, was noted 
to be the murder capital of the world and the state of the um, United States. And so I just think it all for gang violence to poverty, um, crack cocaine, the murders, going to school and seeing how I'm next to this guy today. But to my understanding, the outpouring of love for people who come together and help raise me and give me character and integrity, even um, shine a light even in the midst of growing up in the midst of darkness. Okay, Dr. Boone, uh, this is Mohammed Fahim. Uh, so, uh, Sheila was talking to uh, to us just now uh, that you got multiple degrees. When I got my first two bachelors and then my masters, uh, I also wanted to go and do a PhD and my dad said, "Man, you are, you know, you're dying by degrees, go make a living." And kicked me out of the house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I know what you mean. It's still like I was a, um, a full-time student. Um, I got my undergrad in business. Uh -huh. I went back and got my got back went back and got my master's. But I discovered this: there's a skin to be good yeah. when God calls it to be good. Yep. And I wanted to do uh, the best that I could do. Oh, yeah. Education is is always good. Having degrees is always good. Uh, I. I uh, was also, for a long time, I was working with Illinois WorkNet as the Director of Business Employer Solutions and Corporate Relations. That is the State Unemployment Office uh, Partners, uh, you know, for Workforce Development. And uh, one of the local colleges, a degree mill, who do executive MBAs and all of those, called me to speak at uh, their at their college to their students. And I go up there and I see there's about 30 or 40 people sitting over there, all middle-aged, wanting to get an executive MBA. Uh, and I told them, listen, guys, unless your employer has been paying for this, you are much better off taking that money and starting a business rather than getting an MBA at this stage in your life. Uh, that college never called me back. I wonder why, Dr. Boone. Why do you think that happened? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you so much for your ministry and all that you're doing for the community. And we do need people, you know, people like you who uh, who do things for the sake of the community. Sheila, you take it and run with it for the, uh, for the next uh, yes, you know, couple you know, of questions. Well, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit, Dr. Boone, about... Uh, today's world, there's so much going on, especially, you know, within the church, but are you concerned at all about the different backlashes relating to politically correct topics uh, of discussion and the complexity of what we're witnessing today? I mean, there's different types of rights, people are voting for this right and that right, and so many issues that are going on. Are you concerned at all about the backlash that the church may have about not addressing some of these issues? Well, um, not necessarily concerned, but it's my job to bring forth awareness, knowing that we've been called and commissioned to be able to stand on truth regardless of what the world is doing. Um, God has given us a commission, and we have a mandate to share the truth even in the midst of lies. And, and the Word of God has the power to change. It has the power to transform. It has the power to bring someone out of the darkness into the light. And, um, and I walk in that authority knowing that it has changed my life I see the change that it is making in the city I am. I've been seeing some people who were the toughest, who run gangs, who deal drugs, and how the power of the gospel changed their life and brought them from one condition into another. And I just know that no matter on where we go and no matter where we take this gospel to, it can bring a change and transformation. Now, I can, I can um, perceive that but sometimes it seems like that we are guilty of being silent. So if anything I can be concerned about, is us being a silent church, us being mute in the mouth. Our job is to speak out now more time than ever before. If we continue to be quiet, the church on the quiet diet can be a church that watches, that can become irrelevant. We have the answer. And listen, the church or the world will continue to have the problem if we keep the answer to ourselves. So that's my concern. Why are we not speaking up? Why are we not going into the world? Not we not sharing what we know that has the power to change to many as possible. So that's my prerogative. Everywhere I go, every chance I get, 
I want to make sure people know the truth that can able to set Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Boone. And on that, uh, on that note, thank you so much for joining us. And this is where people get the message on WCPT. It's not just about politics, but also about society and the world that we live in. Sheila, thank you so much for bringing in Dr. Boone. And folks, on that uh, note, uh, let's uh, turn around and let you know a little bit about, more about what we are going to be covering today. Uh, Ken, you wanted to talk about uh, what we'll be doing on the show today. Yeah, some interesting things have happened in the news uh, just yesterday. Um, the judge in the, uh, the Donald Trump trial uh, for the insurrection, uh, Tanya Chutkin, has basically made a very important uh, benchmark happen. She set for February 9th is when they're going to start jury selection for that trial. Now, the trial itself is set for March 4th, but this is a no-nonsense judge, and it's becoming very real in that um, in that proceeding, and it's the type of thing that um, she's not going to yield to an election cycle. She made that very clear. Mm -hmm. So with what's trying to be put forward... Yeah, they, and what they're they trying were trying to push it to after the yeah, elections after in the election, Trump's team. That's not going to happen. She has basically put her foot down, and yesterday was a, a big turning point on, on doing that. So uh, what's going to be uh, interesting is once that trial happens, and the preponderance of the evidence, from what I've seen, there is no way he's not going to be convicted of it, and I can almost guarantee, and this is just my opinion, okay. that um, there will be no uh, release pending appeal, so if that does happen in March, as it's scheduled to do, uh, we could have, for the first time in history, seeing a ex-president in jail. Well, and he could be re-elected as a president sitting in jail, looking, uh, looking at what's happening out in the world right now. Uh, folks, if you want to call in, the number to call in is 773 Seven six three nine two seven eight. That is seven six three WCPT. I'm your host Mohammed Fahim. In the studio with me is uh, Ken Deluc and also Joey Alfano. And of course, sitting with us, looking at me, giving me that look, is uh, Tyree Pipkins, <laughs> our intern. Uh, and if you would like to join the show again, visit our website triple w. TLSChicago.com. We'll take a quick break and come back in on the back of the break with Lori Summers, who will be joining us, and she is the Will County Coroner. Are you a business looking for the right talent or a job seeker searching for your dream career? Look no further than the Center for Strategic Solutions, your workforce solutions experts. Our experienced team at the Center for Strategic Solutions is dedicated to connecting employers with top-tier talent and helping job seekers find opportunities that truly align with their goals. You're hired. We're more than just consultants. We're your partners in success. Ready to take your workforce to the next level or land that ideal job? Contact the Center for Strategic Solutions today at 1-847-306-9274 or visit us online at www.cfss.us. The Center for Strategic Solutions, your bridge to a brighter future in the Windy City. The number to call is 847-306-9274 or send us an email at info at cfss.us. That is info. Info at cfss.us. Did you know there's an Illinois mandate that states by 2025, ComEd has to have 25% of the energy they deliver come from a green source? Because of this, plus the fees and taxes you've already paid on this program, if you qualify, you can get solar on your home at no out-of-pocket cost. This can mean an average savings on your electric bill of maybe 30 to 50%. More importantly, it would eliminate the uncertainty of ComEd raising your rates by whoever knows how much each year. Some people have noticed a 41% increase on their bill this spring, and ComEd has been asking for another 80% increase over the next four years. If your average bill is 200 bucks a month now, maybe it could be reduced to 100 bucks a month. Now, five years, would you rather pay 115 or possibly 4 to 500? If you'd like to see if you can qualify for this program, call Ken DeLuke at 312-617-8979. That's 312-617-8979. Help us save the environment and change that electric bill burden. That's 312-617-8979. Take advantage of this program while it's still available. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, folks, and welcome back to the Lightning Strike. Uh, joining me is uh, Laurie Summers. And, uh, Laurie, good morning. 
Good morning to you. How are you today, sir? Doing very well. It's a, it's a beautiful day out there in Chicago before the snow hits. So, uh, one of the things uh, that I wanted to really quickly let you uh, let people know that uh, Lori Summers is the coroner for Will County. And uh, Lori, how does a coroner differ from a medical examiner? Well, being a medical examiner requires you to go to um, medical school. Um, with a focus on, oh. and the key word here is forensic pathology. Okay. Um, we have, uh, they are appointed to that seat, and the coroners are elected. Hmm. And for a little bit of knowledge to the folks out there, which I don't think they realize, is that throughout our entire country, on that same state, the hmm. entire country, there are only 416 forensic pathologists. Wow. We fortunately have two. And they are, and again, I may be being a little biased, they are the best. Um, we also work with other pathologists when Dr. Bell and Dr. Michelle, who are husband and wife team, need to have a little bit of time off because they work very, very hard. Okay, so what, what qualifications and training are required uh, to become a coroner in, uh, in Will County, in your jurisdiction? It, within Will County, once you are elected to that position, you are can, um, required to take, on a yearly basis, a 40-hour state test. Mm -hmm. You um, have to do other continuing education. However, what is um, very, very helpful it's having a medical background. Okay. And to, to be able to put everything together in conjunction with those pathologists or at the coroner is making that decision on their own. So, also, um, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Also, having, you know, mortuary mm -hmm. science um, helps with that. Uh, EMS, uh, mm -hmm. law enforcement, all of that works together. The name is considered medical legal. That is the name and, and kind of like the title that you look at when you're making those decisions and on qualifications. So what, what, are, what are your qualifications for this, Lori? I'm a registered nurse. I um, have been for more years than I care to admit. And it is basically having an understanding of how the body works. Okay. And not only do, not only do I rely on Dr. Bell and Dr. Michelle's findings, but there are times when that decision has to be made on my own, mm -hmm. looking at medical records, looking at testing that was done, doing almost like a virtual autopsy, and that all comes into play. Laurie, I have a question. <clears throat> what is uh, some of the most challenging and complex cases that you've encountered as a coroner, and how did you approach them? Well, there's been a lot of them. Um, we approach all the cases regardless of what we find in the end is suspicious. So we look at everything. Over the past month, we've had some very uh, difficult cases, and I'm not really mm -hmm. going to be able to go into it this time. Yep. Um, it's making sure that not only are we doing our job in the investigation, but getting those autopsies done, working with law enforcement, working with EMS, and making sure that we are making proper calls and right decisions at the end of the day. And um, the past month has been very challenging, not only um, for myself, but for my deputies. But fortunately, you, again, and maybe I'm being biased, I have the best of the best when it comes to my deputy coroner investigators. Yep, absolutely. As well as and uh, we. Stuff. We did uh, we did cover some of the you know the the, the latest thing that happened in, especially in, in Plainfield because uh, it's an ongoing investigation and uh, you know don't want to go uh, and talk about that uh, but uh, can you can you walk us through the process of investigating a death and what factors you consider during your examinations? Absolutely. Um, initially, what we will get, of course, we're going to be what we call the last responders. Mm -hmm. We're called on the scene after death has been determined, okay? So my deputies will go out to the scene, um, pictures, 
are super, super important. Um, they are very good at this. Mm-hmm. And doing interviews with the family or legal next to kin or friends. And it starts with speaking with law enforcement, EMS, that was on scene if they are still there. Um, we then go in, do the complete look through whatever place we are at. And again, pictures, pictures, pictures are so important. Folks, because you, gotta, the, the, you and I can send something that the camera will catch. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So, folks, uh, we are talking with uh, Laurie Summers. She is the coroner for Will County. Uh, you're tuned in to WCPT on the lightning strike, 8.20 a.m. Sunday mornings. And uh, Ken is trying to use his phone to listen to something else, I guess, of the show. <laughs> and we got some feedback. Sorry about that, Lori. So if you have any questions for Lori, feel free to ask. Feel free to call in or you can text us 773-763-9278. And uh, Lori, my uh, other, other question for you right now is uh, in cases of natural deaths, what factors do you take into account uh, when determining the cause, especially in cases where no obvious signs are present? It, it's, it, 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 again, that's going to be a case-by-case basis. Um, is this better? By the way, Mohammed? I took it. I'm sitting in my car because my dogs tend to bark and I want to be out of You sound good. Feedback now? You sound okay. good. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we're going to look at um, when we walk in is going to be based on their medical history and their background. Okay. And that can be, and again, it's case by case. It doesn't necessarily apply to the age of the person, but that's a huge factor. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're not seeing any traumas or any injuries or an indicator of that they fell, then we can base it off their medical history. And a doctor their primary care physician can sign those cases off. Okay. So we're going to be looking at everything. And it doesn't matter if even we're leaning towards a medical case where this was actually a natural death. Mm -hmm. We do a thorough investigation. So how has technology and advances in forensic science impacted the work uh, of coroners in in recent years? Well, this is my geeky side, guys. (laughs) I love this. This is just... Absolutely. Uh, technology has come forward so much, and we use that a lot. Um, a, with my, my cold case um, mm-hmm. group that I have in, I have two retired police officers, and it's helped in solving cases dating back to 1974 wow. and identifying. And we do that through DNA wow. and the yeah. genoming sequence. And we've been very, very uh, successful with that by investing that money. Over the past year and a half, we are at five cases that, like I said, that were um, unsolved dating back to 1974. Um, We also use the DNA to identify people if we can't identify them out in the field. Um, You know, a horrible car accident where thermal injuries were involved. You can say this is this person, but if we aren't 100% sure, we will do, you know, check for the DNA do forensic odontology, mm-hmm. which is not new technology, but a very good way. We are fortunate, again, to have two of the best people, which is uh, Dr. Ed Pavlik and Dr. Denise Merman. Dr. Pavlik was instrumental in working on some of the um, John Wayne Gacy cases, and Dr. Merman was down um, at the hurricane down in Louisiana. She was able to do through dental identification. So that's the odontology that you just uh, referred to, right? Uh, dental identification? Correct. Yes, forensic so, odontologist. So what resources or support are available now to families who have lost a loved one, and what can they expect when dealing with the coroner's office? Well, one of the resources that I always try, um, especially depending on what type of case is, Um, I am very fortunate to work with a lot of good people throughout the county. Our law enforcement is very, it's also very good, Mm -hmm. um, in pointing families in the right direction on maybe things that they need after they have lost their family member. And I don't care what the case is. 
I don't care what the cause is. Families sometimes need to have some follow-up and maybe talk to people that are going through the same thing. I encourage them to do that when I make calls primarily on our drug toxicities okay. because we don't have those answers until that comes in. And I, I direct them to groups that do that. I've spoken to you about, including in regards to my deputies, mm-hmm. on if they need to speak to someone, this is where you go, whether that be to a psychologist or just talking to one of their peers who have been through the same things. I consider both of those things hand in hand, my deputies and the families, and I always encourage them to reach out. Okay, so folks, uh, our guest on the lightning strike today is Lori Summer. She is the coroner for Will County. And uh, Lori, when you say that uh, yours is an elected position, right? So how many years is it uh, when you have to run again? I mean, is it a two-year position, four years, six years? How is that? It's a four. It is a four-year position, um, and you know that's that's just the nature of it. Okay. But um, in the meantime, my focus is always on making sure that what is being done in our office is that we have the best of technology um, that is available to us. Um, just moving forward and pushing the office into the 21st century. Wonderful. So that's been my goal for the time I've been in. Um, and th- this is, uh, I believe, your your third term now, right? Actually, no. Second. Oh, second. Yes. And I was, d- d- Patrick O'Neill, who was, thank you, Patrick, was my mentor. Okay. Um coming in and then he retired so I was placed in his interim at that point in time and here we are four and a half years later so ah, goodness goodness no you're doing a wonderful job Lori thank you so much for joining us on WCPT on that note folks we'll take a quick break and uh, our guest has been Lori Summers she is the coroner for Will County you can go back and uh, Revisit the show on facebook.com slash WCPT820. And also, we'll be posting this on our YouTube channel on TLS Chicago and on our website, tlschicago.com. Laurie, thank you so much for joining us, and we'd uh, love to have you come back sometime. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing light to our office because it's something that people don't want to think about most of the time. I so appreciate it. Our pleasure over here. Thank you so much. And uh, let's take a quick break. And on the back end of the break, uh, we will be coming back in with Frank Papalardo. Papalardo. And Frank is uh, going to be blowing us out with some of the stuff that he's been doing and working with some of the biggest bands in the country. On that, uh, let's take a quick break. Uh, Back after that. Planning to lay off employees is never easy. Discover the Center for Strategic Solutions, your trusted partner in outplacement services. Are you a company in transition or an individual seeking a new opportunity? Our Chicago-based team specializes in providing personal outplacement services to employees. At the Center for Strategic Solutions, we're not just consultants. We're dedicated to your success. Ready to navigate change with confidence? Contact the Center for Strategic Solutions today at 847-306-9274. Visit us online at www.cfss.us or email info at cfss.us. The Center for Strategic Solutions, empowering employers and job seekers for success in the heart of Chicago. Did you know there's an Illinois mandate that states by 2025, ComEd has to have 25% of the energy they deliver come from a green source? Because of this, plus the fees and taxes you've already paid on this program, if you qualify, you can get solar on your home at no out-of-pocket cost. This can mean an average savings on your electric bill of maybe 30 to 50%. More importantly, it would eliminate the uncertainty of ComEd raising your rates by whoever knows how much each year. Some people have noticed a 41% increase on their bill this spring, and ComEd has been asking for another 80% increase over the next four years. 
dollars. If your average bill is two hundred bucks a month now, maybe it could be reduced to a hundred bucks a month. Now, five years, would you rather pay one hundred and fifteen or possibly four to five hundred? If you'd like to see if you can qualify for this program, call Ken DeLuke at three one two six one seven eight nine seven nine. That's three one two six one seven eighty nine seventy nine. Help us save the environment and change that electric bill burden. That's three one two six one seven eighty nine seventy nine. Take advantage of this program while it's still available. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, Chicago, and welcome back to the Lightning Strike. And uh, Ken DeLuke is going to be introducing our next guest, and his name is Frank Papalardo. I I said it correct. You got now. it right. Hey, congratulations! And also in the studio <laughs> with us is Joey Alfano, and uh, Joey is the mascot of the world famous Harlem Globetrotters. Man, we got to celebrate in the studio with us today. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Joey, for joining us. Oh, great to be here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mohammed. Okay, and uh, can can you do some tricks in the studio today? Can you make a couple of jumps and jump shots? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's teaching me. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead, Frank. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, man, and thank you so much for waiting online. And uh, so, such a pleasure to have you on WCPT on 8:20 a.m. over here. The lightning strike. Thank you very much. I'm uh, happy to be here. I've had the uh, pleasure of actually seeing Frank in, uh, at his work when he was um, engineering for the PBS show Soundstage, and I went to a couple of those concerts, and uh, it was a, a phenomenal experience. Um, Frank, I, you have so many stories that you've shared with me in the past years. Could you share some of the most interesting things that you've encountered and some of the cool people you dealt with? Yeah, well, you know, I've been very blessed in that I, I, I've done over a, Hundred, probably close to 140 um, prime time concert television shows, and, and what my job is is I record the concert uh, multi track, and then it's my job to mix it for Blu Ray, DVD, television. That, that's sort of my specialty, and uh, I've also done three movies, concert movies. You know, you know, much like the Taylor Swift movie that just came out. Okay, uh, but this was this was Josh Groban and Stevie Nicks, and I also did one for Kenny Chesney. Wow. Um, so uh, it, it's, it's been great. And wasn't it true that you also uh, were the head engineer for the last Beach Boys album? Yes, I did. I mixed the last Beach Boys album, and I actually mixed the last Chicago album, which was kind of a thrill for me in that when I first started in music, you know, like everyone, I started playing guitar. Uh, early at six years old, I had my first band when I was 13. And in that band, we played Chicago songs. We played, you know, 25 or 64. Does anybody know what time it is? And then to grow up and uh, almost exactly 50 years later, be able to work with the band, you know, that you, if you were told that 13 year old that someday you'll be working with these guys, uh, he never would have believed it. Yeah, that's it, amazing. But, uh, Actually, Chicago and Beach Boys was my first concert that I ever saw. They were playing uh, together. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was a great show. I think we, I, I, I saw that one too. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, some of the people I've worked with and, uh, you know, I, one thing comes to mind. I think it was kind of, uh, somebody that was, is really giving, um, during the pandemic, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot going on. And one day I came home and there was a giant box on my porch. And my first thought was, oh, man, I'm going to really kill my wife if she doesn't stop buying toilet paper and paper towels. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay. it, it turned out uh, it was addressed to me. So hey, I uh, hey Frank. Box. If you did, yep. if you did go through with that thought that came to your mind, you had plenty of paper towels to mop things up, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, so I, I, I dragged this big box into my house, and I put it uh, uh, down, and I look at it, and I can't figure out what the heck is this. And I open the box, and it's a guitar case. I opened the guitar, and it was a Les Paul signed by Stevie Nicks, and she gave it to me as a gift wow. for working on, oh my God. on her project. So, wow. Joey, Joe, a question for you. Joey, go ahead. No, sure. that's 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 us. That's amazing. Uh, just out of curiosity, who was uh, some of the some of the different of uh, your favorite bands that you work with? Um, you know, I I, I like singers. So you know, some mm. of the great singers. I think some of my favorite shows was uh, were uh, Bad Company, 
Um, Paul Rogers was a great singer. Heart was a favorite. Uh, I actually did Bon Jovi. That was a lot of fun. And uh, Train is another good band. So, you know, I can go on and on and on. But uh, almost every all of them were, you know, in some way fun to do. And uh, it, it was a great run. You know, we had a 12-year run of, of doing soundstage. And I still do that. It's just not going to soundstage. I still do record concerts and, and mix them uh, uh, for television. And I also do local things, too. Uh, I also do live sound. I've been the uh, Ides of March uh, sound guy for 22 years. And, uh, in fact, I just worked for them last night in Lake Geneva. So uh, it, it's been a good run. Um, Robert Plant, tell me about that. You you had mentioned that before, but that was kind of oh, amazing because okay. he's always been a superhero of mine. Yeah, you know, I I don't get too nervous or starstruck with people because I've met so many of them. But I've got to <laughs> admit, we when I you know I was sort of a Led Zeppelin freak. I really loved Led Zeppelin, and I got to sit at a meeting with him before he shot the show, and I was sitting next to him, uh -huh. and. Uh, I was really nervous. I mean, I, 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 I usually am talkative, and I was just, I'm like, don't say the wrong thing. Don't say <laughs> so you know, Frank, I, I made uh, one comment, and he looked at me and said, yes, exactly. And I'm like, okay, now shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you, you, you're so right, I mean, After you hang out with people like this, uh, you know, you become a little bit comfortable. Like right now, we are sitting with a celebrity in our studio, and he's giving me that look. And we're we've been having, you know, giving high fives to each other. Uh, I remember going back uh, about oh, almost like twenty, thirty years back now, man. I was doing radio in Chicago, in in Houston, and so I had George Bush on the on the radio with me. I had uh, Bill Clinton in the you know in the studio, wow. and I'm like. Uh, you know, hey, they put their pants on one leg at a time. So do I. Yep. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not, not, yeah. nothing to be to be shocked or uh, you know. Uh, but uh, coming back to to what you have been saying, you have worked with so many celebrities now. Uh, yeah. Any any particular instance stands out in, in 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 your mind? Something that you could share with us before we let you go for the day? I know that you got uh, yeah, well, a, a you know, going on now, right now. Yeah, I'm currently working on a Brian Wilson record, so um, it you know it, it, it's going to be a great record. He's written some great songs, and um, you know that I, I got to spend time with him. Um, I remember one time we were sitting in the studio, and I said to him, "I go, Brian, good vibrations. How, how many tracks was that? Was that four track or eight track?" And he uh, said, "Oh, well." It was eight track because cello was on eight and tambourine was on seven. He, he like recited the track sheet like this was like you know forty years ago. Wow! So uh, his memory is is is, is something, and it, it was just a, a thrill to uh, be able to work with the Beach Boys and work with him. Um, you know, their vocals are uh, you know the best. You know. Now, now, Frank, I know that you do a lot of local stuff. Um, if if a band wants to reach out to you. What is the best way for them to get a hold of you? Yes, I'm pretty easy to find. If you just Google my name, my website will come up, and that's just my name dot com. It's Frank Papalardo, P A P P A L A R D O dot com, and um, my phone number is within the website. And uh, like I said, I'm pretty easy to find, and I produce local bands and record local bands. And it's sort of just. I like to, I don't know, I kind of look at like giving back and that, you know, you give a, a band a chance to have somebody that really knows what they're doing and, and has worked with a lot of people and, and bring their music and their vision to, you know, the forefront. And uh, it's something I really, really enjoy because it's kind of low pressure compared to the other stuff I do. <laughs> Wonderful. Frank, thank you so much for joining us, uh, folks. Frank thank Papalado. On the line with us on WCPT 820 AM. And in the studio with us is uh, Joey Alfano. Joey, let's switch gears now, man. Okay. Harlem Globetrotters, how how much fun is that? Oh, man, it, it's it's incredible. And honestly, the, the life of just being on the road, seeing the families, uh, younger middle uh, middle age and and then older you see grandparents with the grandkids you know uh -huh. showing them what they were watching when they were kids and it's incredible i mean the the globetrotter history goes so deep we're about to hit a hundred years in wow. 2026 you don't look a day over 30 to <laughs> me man <laughs> okay yeah, yeah so uh what are some of the fun things that you remember 
as part of Harlem Globetrotters. How, how did you get into this gig? Let's start off with that. Yeah, so long story short, I have been breakdancing now for years. My mom was a high school teacher, got me into that as uh, just putting me into a lot of activities. And then I, uh, in college, I tried out to be my mascot, and I ended up being the mascot for uh, uh, Oregon Ducks. And so that just did more for me than my career, or my, I should say, my college diploma ever really did for me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was a collegiate mascot, one of the most, our first year, we would go to the national championship in football. Okay. And I was just like, wow, out the gate, first, you know, first, no, first year in the job. And Did uh, you get a ring? Didn't get a ring. We won the Rose Bowl. We won the Rose Bowl. Didn't get a Rose Bowl <laughs> ring. Still salty about that. Oregon, if you're watching this, <laughs> if you hear me, give me that. Yeah. But uh, you know what? I was with uh, our our minor league baseball team in the area, and we were a Cubs affiliate, and uh -huh. we won our championship the same year that we that the Cubs won. And so both. The farm team and the, the major league team, we won our championships. And so my, my GM actually got a Cubs ring, and we got our uh, minor league championship ring. So you know, it, all, it all comes full circle. Okay, right. so uh, what, are, where, where, what are some of the countries that you have traveled with the Globetrotters? How many countries did you travel to? Gosh, you know, I've traveled. I did two months over in the U.K. That was, that was a blast. Loved the U.K. And we were the first international tour I joined with the Globetrotters actually in 2020 months, months before mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic hit. Okay. 2020, January, you know, I'm like, wow, it's a new decade. And I get this phone call out of the blue, like, hey, our mascot's down. We need somebody, you know, we have your name. And uh, I said, yes. And they, you know, you're 12 <laughs> hours later, you're on a plane to the, you know. But the most incredible part, honestly, for me, gosh, the big cities international, you know, everything mm. outside of the United States. In the, in the United States, we have the NBA, and we're very saturated in basketball. All right. But we, we're seen as like the NBA uh, when we go. We're seen as American basketball. Okay. We're ambassadors of goodwill, as they say. And so uh, just I, my favorite so far was Mexico City. I was really? in Mexico City. And just an NBA. It was the NBA exhibition arena. Full, just all these people coming out to see, you know, the the world famous Harlem Globetrotters and the energy. The energy is yeah. just live, raw. And all so, how, how 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 do you come down after one of those exhibition games? I mean, you know, the energy levels must be like sky high, mm -hmm. and then the game is over, and you come back, uh, you know, uh, to wherever that you are staying at. Mm -hmm. How's that? I mean, boom, well, and then, you know. Well, what's interesting, it's it's fast pace because right. it's like I'm doing the same thing again tomorrow in the next city. You know, today was Mexico City, tomorrow's Monterrey, Guadalajara. You know, we're bouncing city to city. We're in Texas, you know, California. We're going, you know, just within California, uh, Anaheim, Los Angeles, going to uh, San Francisco, up to, up in the Oregon, you know, Eugene, Portland, uh, Seattle, Vancouver. So, you know, we just do the, you know, once you finish, you do it all over again. Okay, folks, uh, in the studio joining us, uh, in the studio live with us, not joining us, live with us today is Ken DeLuke and, uh, of course, uh, Joey Alfano, who is the mascot of the world-famous Harlem Globetrotters. If you want to talk with Joey, please uh, feel free to call in 773-763-9278. Nine two seven eight or WCPT, and uh, so uh, coming back uh, to uh, to you now, Joey. When you started with the Harlem Globetrotters, uh, did you lose your hair then, or did you lose your <laughs> you know afterwards? Oh, uh, totally. You know, it's funny when I when I originally got the mascot, I had hair to my torso. I had I had the longest hair. No kidding, man. Well, actually, actually Globy is bald too, so that like, truly fits, right? Yeah. Well, I do I do two mascots with the Globetrotters. So I do Globy, and then I also do Globy's big brother, Big G, which is the big inflatable mascot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that one's yeah. Yeah. So uh, when when you when you got the you know the costume on and everything, and uh, uh, you know you suddenly start itching, what do you do? Oh gosh, you uh, <laughs> you 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 wing it for one. No, because I'm I'm itching right now with these headphones uh, on, and I don't know how many people had these headphones on before me and how many cooties they left on the headphones. But my my ears, I'm constantly scratching now. So yeah, uh, you just have to grin and bear it. 
honestly, you know, my, my focus is outside of the suit. The suit, you know, you it becomes you and you just, uh, I, I rely on a lot of muscle memory. <laughs> As, or not muscle memory, photogenic memory, because I, my, okay. my vision is limited, so it heightens my other senses. I can't hear. I have a head you okay. know, around my head, you know, so I can't hear. Um, but because certain senses are limited, certain senses, you know, kind of get heightened. And uh, it, I do have a different psychology, you know, when, when someone is in a mascot suit, and a very, at, at a professional level, too, at that. Uh -huh. You know, it, it brings out certain characteristics that we wouldn't normally otherwise, you know, have. That's why they say introverts make the best mascots because they come out of their shell, where, versus extroverts actually kind of go within. Really? Huh. Yeah. That's some philosophy coming from uh, from Globy, the the mascot yeah. man over Never here. Considered you an introvert? I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, go I think, uh, I think yeah. we have uh, we have somebody calling in. Uh, nope. Okay. So, uh, question now. Sure. And I remember that when we did a, a podcast together, you know, about a year or so back now. I asked you this question. It's coming back to me. So if you need to go to the bathroom, what do you do? Hold it? <laughs> yeah, you better time it right because otherwise you're going on the court. And, uh, you know, that would... Uh, so you're, look, you're pretty much hydrated going in, right? I mean, cause you're going to be there for what? How, how, long, how long is a typical gig now? Gosh. Well, each game... You know, we do games, and uh -huh. each game is about an hour and a half. You know, we, okay. we do our best. And it's not bad. You can you can hold it for an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I get, you know, I get breaks in between, but, you know, it's fast pace. At the same time, fast pace. And you're just making sure that uh, you, you're engaging the crowd, facilitating the uh, okay. engagement. So. Yeah, I, I can uh, I can relate to that. And we got John calling in. And, John, you, you, you say that you think you know Ken. You sure about that? Hey, John, you're on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll, I, I only have a question for your guest, but what I do have a question is, is for um, Ken DeLuke. Okay. All and right. it's Ken DeLuke, if you are the same Ken DeLuke whose parents owned a, uh, a, a music bar at 69th and back in the late 70s and early 80s. Yeah, Shag's Pub. Does, well, he, it's, uh, does he owe you any money? My, no, um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Kind of now, bit, is this uh, a John who was uh, running our open mic on Tuesday nights by chance? I sure did. Oh, John Devlin. This guy is oh, amazing. I... <laughs> he is amazing. He's like one of the best musicians I've ever encountered, and I appreciate you calling in and touching bases. Yeah, look, you know. Hey, John, uh, Small World, thank you for connecting. Do, do uh, you know, tune in to WCPT on uh, Sunday mornings for the lightning strike. And uh, we like to have fun. We also like to uh, to focus on current things that are happening. And uh, we all know that, uh, you know, fun aside, there is a lot of uh, things going out in the world. Uh, yesterday, folks, in, in Washington, D.C., there was a huge... Uh, march in support of, uh, you know, having a ceasefire in this war that is going on in Middle East. Uh, I'm told that there was almost half a million people on the streets in Washington, okay? Uh, a lot of the news media have uh, have covered this thing. If you have any, any concerns, questions, feel free to call in. we got 10 more minutes before we uh, log on and sign off for the day today. Uh, but yeah, the, there is a, a call for ceasefire. The war has been going on for almost a month now, and it makes no sense at all that uh, this thing cannot be settled across the table. You know, you, uh, one side comes in, and uh, this is something that I had said in the past also. Uh, I'm very, very concerned that our president is not using the right language to to address this issue. He started off by calling, uh, you know, the other team, and there's no teams in here. Again, this is people who are losing their lives, and uh, it is time that uh, we, as one of the strongest countries in the world, put a stop to it. And there is no reason at all why this thing should be dragging on this long, okay? There is a two-state solution that has been put up time and again, time and again, uh, Make it happen, Mr. President. You're going to be losing a lot of support in 2024 if you don't step up and become a statesman for one and not a politician. Uh, Joey, 
coming back to you. I'm sorry, I, I had to let that rant out, man, because this is, uh, this is crazy what is happening. We are sitting over here, you know, nice and, uh, and snug, and uh, there are people getting killed right and left for no fault of theirs just because someone did something. Uh, now you're, you're punishing the entire uh, community, entire, you know, uh, lack of a word, an entire country for the, you know, for the acts of a few. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, Ken, you had someone calling in who actually owed you money or you owed him money? What's well, the, what's I probably the still man? owe him money because sometimes <laughs> I didn't pay the bills back then. But, uh, no, John, John's a really nice guy. And, uh, okay. If you ever need some local talent, uh, mm-hmm. definitely reach out to him. Okay. And uh, on that note, folks, uh, let's get back to Joey. So, Joey, when uh, when you are, uh, you know, you're working with these, you know, highly talented people, uh, do they ever pick you up and try to dunk you? <laughs> hey, my job is to dunk myself. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, do uh, mascots have groupies? Do you have like a following to go on the road? And, uh, oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 those are kind of like the creeps. You get like the, like, a, you know, they don't know who's inside. <laughs> those are the weirdos. No, but, uh, you know. A lot, of, a lot of families, you know, a lot of families, you know, we have, they have the dolls and, uh, you know, I, I'm always heartwarmed when I see, you know, a kid holding my doll. I'm like, oh, that's me. I'm like, you know, I'm best friends with Glowy. You know? Bobblehead? Bobbleheads do. Yeah. They have okay. Bobblehead. They have uh, the doll. They have, you know, and then the show, you know, it's, it's amazing. We actually have, we have our second season on uh, uh, NBC. They have uh, Play It Forward is a... Uh, the, we have, oh yeah, on Saturday mornings they have that uh, yep. the home the Goldfeder show. I seen. Yeah, that a couple we have times. a brand new. We we got a new president, and he used to be the VP for Nickelodeon, and so he's been giving us a big push back into network. Television. Are you going to be on the show? Uh, you might see me for a second here or there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me know. Give me a heads up. Yeah. Oh, totally. So, as, as a mascot, do you have to have uh, extensive uh, insurance? <laughs> Oh gosh, uh, my insurance is training. You know, I I train very hard. I I okay. exercise uh, strict. I have very strict training regimen. Okay. Um, that's that's really what I need to do to be successful at what I do. And you have to be very 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 flexible and um, you know in in shape all the time, right? I mean, in the studio now, uh, you know, Joey has been uh, running back and forth laps over here when before we came in in, in the <laughs> in the hallway or out there. He's like uh, a bunny on steroids. Okay, so <laughs> uh, so good to have you. So good to have you. Thank you so much again uh, for joining us, uh, folks. Uh, Joey Alfano is the. Uh, mascot for the Harlem Globetrotters, and he's doing his mascoty things over here. And uh, you know, you, you see that now. Okay, uh, so coming back to your, your background, uh, you were born in in Chicago, or born and raised in Chicago, definitely. Yeah, my uh, you know, it's, my background's kind of funny because my my dad was an immigrant, came to uh, the United States, didn't know any English, mm-hmm. and then uh, my he started taking English classes, and and my mom was the teacher. And my uh-huh. mom would say that, oh, your dad was the worst student I ever had. <laughs> you know, didn't pick up any Spanish, but I got his broken English. <laughs> That's yep. That's good. So you, your dad uh, migrated from Mexico? Or? Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so you uh, you had a... a a, a, a mixed background growing mm-hmm. up, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And you know, and that's and that's kind of you know why I mentioned Mexico City earlier. Mm-hmm. One of one of the why that was my favorite city was I got to bring the show to my family outside of the country, and that was just such a, a special moment oh, that's for me. Great. So you still have family back in Mexico City? Oh, absolutely, my whole dad's side of the family. Yep. Okay. Now, and speaking uh, of cities, what are the um, name some of the major cities that you played in that uh, struck out this uh, important? <sighs> Gosh, well, let's see. This la- the last tour I did, I did a West Coast tour, but you know we covered all throughout the United States. We were in about 17, 18, 19, 20 states. Um, Vancouver, New Orleans, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Oregon, uh, Portland, uh, Oklahoma City. I was in, we were in Chicago. We hit uh, Florida, Tallahassee, you know, all just the map was littered in stars. We, I want to say we hit 125 cities. 
wow. in the span of four and a half months. Wow. Uh, what about Europe? I know you said um, Great Britain, you uh, enjoyed that. Is there other places in Europe that you've been? You know, I, this last tour, I actually was supposed to be in uh, a Europe tour. They covered 14 countries, and I actually turned it down. I had some work here in Chicago uh, that I was a part of. But uh, they were, they tr the, the Globetrotters themselves travel around the world, global, and just do put on a... So they trot the globe. Oh, they, they <laughs> trot, all right. Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. Okay, folks, uh, in the studio with us today, Joey Alfano, who is the mascot for the Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, you are tuned in to the Lightning Strike on WCPT. I'm your host, Mohammed Fahim, with me in the studio as always, the co-host, uh, uh, Ken DeLuc. Uh, and we try to bring to you what is happening in the world out there. We try to bring to you uh, interesting guests and also different perspectives. And if you have any questions that you would like to, you can always uh, text us at 773-763-9278, or you can call in. we still got a couple of minutes before we wind up the show today. Uh, you can also go to our website, tlschicago.com, or you can follow us on Facebook. And again, it is TLS for the Lightning Strike Chicago. And you can also follow us on on YouTube and go and check some of the, uh, you know, previous episodes on any time that you want. Uh, if you have any concerns, questions, suggestions, uh, topics that you would like us to address, or you want us to highlight someone who is a person of the week, that uh, or an organization of the week who's doing something good for the community feel free to go to our website send us a, a message through the website and we'll be happy to have you on ken i agree i was actually just going to say that uh, we do need people of the week so if you have someone that's uh, philanthropic or really uh, adds to the community please uh, s shoot us their information we'd like to reach out and, and be a part of the show wonderful on that note folks uh, We'll be signing off for the day today. Again, this is The Lightning Strike. I'm your host, Mohammed Fahim. In the studio with me, Tidy Pipkins, our intern, Joey Alfano, mascot for the Harlem Group Trotters. And uh, Ken DeLuke, and running the boats today is Alex. And Alex, thank you so much for all your help today. And we'll be seeing you bright and early next Sunday, 9 o'clock. Set your clocks back today if you have not already done so, okay? We'll be seeing you again next week. Same time, same place. Have a nice week.